guys. We're in Capella right now for our first year anniv wedding anniversary staycation. So thought I'd make a part two on my driving experience as requested by our number one top viewer, Xenia Lau, which is also one of our dear friends, uh, show his best friend. The obvious advantages about OBCDC is that it's in Ubi, so it's quite easy to get to, right? It's not like very far out like some of the other driving schools like the Bukit Batok one or the Woodlands one. Of course, it's near for you if you stay there, but if you, like me, you stay more towards the east or if you stay somewhat central, right, then obviously Ubi CDC would be better for you. I'm not sure how it's like in the other schools. Maybe they do the same thing in Bukit Batok, maybe they do the same thing in Woodlands. There are quite a few things that they want you to sign up for. One is like the lessons for the theory uh, classes, which I didn't go. The theory lessons are quite basic, right? So basically what it is is that you take lessons before your actual uh, BTT, which is your basic theory, and your FTT, which is your final theory. So it's kind of your choice whether you want to take it or not. I self-studied, so I bought the book, I, I downloaded an app, I just found information online, and I studied from there, and it's not too difficult to, to master and to study. So I would say like, you don't really need to take the lessons at school. But if you're someone that prefers like a structured way to study and you really need someone to like teach you and stuff, then uh, I guess it's, it's okay to go as well. The only thing is you gotta pay for them. And I think like each lesson might, might set you back around like $30 or, or so. So that's like an, an additional cost to something that's really already costing so much money. The next thing is called the, the induction course, right? So basically what it is, is that you go there for 30 minutes before you start your practical lessons and then they teach you like different things about the car, steering wheel, um, gear stick, how to turn on the wipers, how to signal, and I... Oh, sorry baby. <laughs> I guess it's good because, you know, for someone who's not familiar with a car like me, right? I, I actually had to learn it in the first like 20 minutes of my first practical lesson, but then it costs money, right? Again, I think it will cost you like around 30 to $40 or so. So just by not going to like the theory lessons and then this induction thing, I kind of already save a lot of money. You know, after the practical lessons, there are two other things which you need to go for. One is a pre-something operative check where they kind of check your competencies as a learner driver, like whether you know the road rules and whether you know like basic things about the car, like again, how to turn on the wiper, or if you know how to signal, if you know where the boot is, etc. right? There is one other thing that you need to do as well, which I didn't do both, because what happened was, for all three items, right, so the induction and these two different things, I kind of called in and said like, hey, you know, can I, do I really need to take it? Because there isn't, there isn't really like any directive of whether I actually need to take it or not. And these two other things that you're supposed to take before your test, right, cost a combine of about 100 over dollars, $120 or so. What they told me was, yeah, you know, we'll do a one-time only waiver and you actually don't have to take all these, all these things. They were saying like it was all because of COVID and then, you know, we understand that tests are uh, kind of limited, test slots are kind of limited now. And so like to help you to take your test faster, you just don't have to do it. Well, that's really nice of them, right? And it might be really because of COVID. It shows you that Originally, you kind of don't really have to take it as well because right now, although I had to take the test four times, lah, but I don't think it, if I went for all these different things, right, I would have passed any quicker and I don't think it would have made a difference to be honest. So just by not going to all these different things, right, you kind of already saved like at least two, three hundred dollars over here, which is a huge amount of money. And then if we talk about like the instructors at UBCDC, there's three different things that you can go for. One is called common pool where you go and you don't have a fixed car and a fixed instructor. The other one is called one team where you have a fixed car every single lesson and I think they rotate between two or three instructors. And then the third one is, the, is that you have the same car and same instructor every single time. So I went with the one team one where essentially I had two different instructors but the same car every single lesson. I think the advantages of that is with the same couple of instructors, right, they kind of know what you're weak at and you know what you kind of need to improve on. So it's good because you get to practice on that like um, every time you go for each lesson, right? And also like once you are more comfortable with them, you're actually more comfortable in taking lessons, you're more comfortable driving. But I think now, now that everything's over, I think like the drawback is that you, you kind of get used to their teaching style, right? Because what I realized is before each test, right, there is a warm-up. 
uh, before you take your driving test. And a different instructor took me for each of these warm-ups, right? And I realized each of them say different things. Like, they, some of them teach you to park differently. Some of them, like, allow you, like, think it's better to just turn the wheel while your car is stationary, while some say, like, don't do it. I would say it really depends what you prefer. If you're, like, comfortable with, like, a different instructor every time, then maybe a different instructor would be better so that you can get a holistic view of the different perspectives of different people. And then for the car, right, also because like each car is different, the car that I had for my lesson track right, was nice, so like the, the accelerator wasn't too sensitive, like it, it wouldn't be like you press and it go like vroom, right? But then some of the, the test cars that I had, right, were really sensitive and the brakes were not super sensitive, so like the way you drive was also had to be different. Yeah, so it might, you know, in hindsight be better to kind of experience different kind of cars so that you know how to adapt to it. Hi baby. Oh you, hello. And then the, the next debate is whether it's better to go school or private, right? I For me, I 100% would think go to school because it's structured, right? So you, you have like a, a structure to follow, you know, they follow this little blue booklet and they teach you module by module. So I, I like that, I learn better like that. It gives me like a schedule and then a goal to work towards, which is clearing all the modules. The instructors will know like in the circuit, which portions the testers will do certain things. Like for example, when they will tell you to apply the emergency brake, the circuit is actually super like booby trappy, right? They put stop lines all over the circuit and they put like the chevrons all over it as well. So if you don't start a stop line, feel immediately. If you go into a chevron, you feel immediately as well. So they will tell you all these little things to take note for as well. I think overall experience, it's good. For me, if anyone asks me, I would definitely recommend going to a driving school instead. Total cost, like I said, I spent about $3,000. So each lesson will cost about $84 and I took about 20, 21 of it. And then I spent about 1.3K on my tests. And then maybe another about $100 or so for the admin fees and to take my digital photograph and applying for the license and things like that. So, so that's my driving experience at UBCDC. I hope this video hasn't been too boring. I tried to like uh, incorporate different backgrounds and stuff, walk around so that it's not just me talking to a screen. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. Bye.